Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape. Escape. Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are hiding in the middle of a great forest, quiet as a shadow, while closing in on you, hunting you down like an animal, is a silent archer who will kill you with an arrow through the heart. Listen now as Escape brings you Anthony Ellis' adaptation of the classic story, Robert of Huntingdon. Let it be known by all present that a sum of 100 pounds is placed upon the head of the outlaw, Robert of Huntington. And that an additional 50 pounds is to be the reward for whomsoever shall maim, kill, or capture the following. The felons Little John, Will Scarlet, Will Stutley, Nick Much, the friar known as Tuck, Gamble Gold, Eleanor Dale, Arthur Bland. David Doncaster, Gilbert of the White Hand. That proclamation was by order of his worship, the Sheriff of Nottingham, in whose house a meeting was taking place. Robin Hood! Robin Hood! I'm sick of the sound of that name. Something's got to be done. It's gone too far. That they shoot the king's deer in the king's forest. Why, they call it their forest. Nobody's safe anymore. Beggar, tinker, bishop, nobody. It's got to stop. Now, now I want Sir Martin of Matlock to say a few words. He's offered his services in the name of the king and myself, Sir Martin. <laughs> My lords, gentlemen, it seems quite obvious that your attempts to put a stop to this Robin Hood have been anything but successful. I've heard it said that more than once the sheriff himself has been tied backwards on an ass and sent trotting home. <laughs> quiet, quiet. We know all about that, Sir Martin. Do you mind getting to the point? All right. The point is that in Sherwood Forest, there's a band of about 140 who fancy themselves... The savior of the poor and the scourge of the rich. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an old story and one I'm sure we've come to know pretty well. Any excuse for outlawry? Right. Well, I propose to stop them. To gather a force of men. A hundred mounted, a hundred archers, and one hundred foot soldiers. Go into that forest and exterminate Robin Hood with the others once and for all. Well, uh, wait, wait, wait. We can't afford to give you such an army without some kind of plan. And besides, most of our best men lie buried there as it is. What you're proposing has been tried. It's nothing new. You don't know these outlaws as we do. I have a plan, Your Worship. Oh? I'll go into the forest alone. Alone? These outlaws don't know me, and I think because of that, I'll be able to succeed. Huh? How? Let's say I pretend to be a, a wronged yeoman. They take me in to become one of the band. I find out their weakness, their sentry posts, everything I can to help us when the time comes for attack. Uh, uh, it's very dangerous, you know. We won't be able to help you if they don't believe your story. Well, it's my life, Your Worship. I can do what I want with it. If I fail, you've lost nothing. If I succeed. Uh, uh, all right. And the rest of you? Good. Good. Give me a week. I'll get word to you when the time comes. My signal for the attack will be a blast on this horn. And now, my lords and gentlemen, I'll disguise myself as a poor but honest yeoman, foully wronged by his worship, the Sheriff of Nottingham. 
The sheriff had made an ally in Sir Martin of Matlock, and with him, the hope that his worst enemy, Robin Hood, would at last be brought to justice. In Sherwood Forest, two men dressed in Lincoln green sat lazily beside a brook. One tall, handsome, his cap set carelessly at an angle on his head, shading the eyes from the sun. The other man, a giant, at least seven feet, and an L or more around the waist, chewing and sucking at the marrow of an entire oxen thigh bone. <coughs> ah, I'm going to have to speak to Nick much about the quality of the sheriff's beef, Robin. <coughs> <laughs> Little John. Mm. You know, I've been thinking. Oh, sir. When was the last time the sheriff of Nottingham came to Sherwood? Uh. <laughs> I remember. It was when Nick Mutch and I brought him. <laughs> remember we tied him backwards? Yes, on? yes, I remember. It's more than a year ago, wasn't it? Doesn't it seem strange to you? Uh. Strange? Yes. Well, no, dull, maybe. Life isn't the same without that nasty little toad to worry. Robin, we've got an idea. We go to Nottingham, huh? We could do it again. Twenty men storm his house. <laughs> no. No, I wasn't thinking of that. But, uh, I have a feeling uh. that something is wrong. He's up to something. I can feel it. The forest has been too quiet and... We haven't been bothered for a long time. I notice you're growing the beginning of a pot. Uh, don't talk to me about <laughs> pots, you <laughs> great cumbersome hog. <laughs> uh, little John, yeah. wait a minute. <clears throat> what? Listen. To what? Someone's coming. Pick up your bow. Give me cover from the trees over there. Mm. I'll wait here. See who it is. Yeah, be careful, Robin. Morning, stranger. Well, good morning to you, my friend. I I seem to have lost my way. Can you tell me where I am? Certainly. This is Sherwood Forest. Where are you going? Nowhere. Anywhere. Where do you come from? Nottingham. Huh? Yes, today, thanks to the sheriff, I lost my cottage, my cow, my land, everything. Oh? I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I know the forest well enough. If you like, I'll guide you through it. Thanks. But, uh, I'm looking for a man here, a particular man. No? Robin Hood. Possibly you know him. He's called an outlaw by some, but... There are others who swear by him. Yes, I, I know. Uh, do you mind if I ask you why you want to find him? Well, they say he's always in need of good yeoman. Now that I'm a felon in the eyes of the king, I have nothing much to live for. Unless he takes me into his company. Well, what is this nasty thing that you did? It was one of the king's deer. I shot it and was seen by a forester. Yeah. I escaped with my life, my longbow, and these arrows. Uh-huh. Now, from the look of your eye, I'd say you have the making of an archer. Little John? Yes? What's your name, my friend? Martin Greenleaf. Ah, this little fellow coming here is called Little John. Martin Greenleaf wants to join the band of Sherwood Forest. Uh, I heard the talk. What are you called? Robin Hood. Mm. Well, I wasn't sure. Take him to David Doncaster, Little John. Have him mm. measured for a mm. suit of green. And then tell Nick Much to prepare some food for him. Welcome to Sherwood, Martin Greenleaf. I think you can see to it that you'll never have regrets for today. So according to his plan, Sir Martin of Matlock was received with all the hospitality and kindness the outlaws could give. Only one looked on the newcomer with a jaundiced eye, Little John. Friar Tuck came upon the giant, sullenly whittling a shaving of wood. Uh. And what's the matter with you, little man? Huh? Yeah, face like that is enough to make a bee's nectar sour. Now, why aren't you at table feasting with that newcomer, Martin? You fat friar. Hmm? Go away. I didn't ask for your company. <laughs> oh, save us all. I don't like yours either. That's no answer to my question. All right, then. I don't like him. 
This Martin Greenleaf. Oh? I don't know why. Uh, Robin's too easy. He's a mark for a sad story. This fellow's told one, that's all. And if the story is true? If. I'd rather have found that out before inviting him to join us. <laughs> you are a suspicious chap. Yeah, well, go on. Go on back and stuff yourself. I didn't ask you here. Yeah, where are you going, Chell? To look for better company. <laughs> But little John had another idea. He dressed himself in the disguise of a tailor and carrying nothing but a stave and a dagger, he made his way to Nottingham, where he hoped to find out what he could about Martin Greenleaf. But luck wasn't with him because he'd gone less than a mile beyond the forest when he was seen by six of the sheriff's henchmen. And because of his great height, they recognized him. I tell you it is, it's little John. I've seen him before when we fought the outlaws in the forest. Take him! Yeah! Yeah! But the odds were too great, and finally Little John was taken prisoner into Nottingham, where he was locked in prison to await the sheriff's displeasure. It was Will Scarlet who heard the news from a friendly tinker and carried it to the outlaws. <laughs> Robin! Robin! Quiet, all of you, quiet! Quiet! What's the matter, Will? Little John. Little John. Well, what about Little John? The sheriff's men took him by surprise. Oh. They've got him now, in Nottingham. Oh. Where? When? He was here a little while ago. That's all I can tell you. On the Nottingham Road, the tinker swears it was Little John. All right, all right, we'll go to Nottingham then. And I'll kill it for one. I'll pick out the sheriff's heart and throw it to the dogs when we come back. <laughs> We will return to Escape and tonight's story, Robert of Huntington, in just a moment. For story and chorus singing, lend your ears to the Choral Ears every Sunday night on most of these same CBS radio stations. Yes, later tonight, enjoy the Choral Ears. And now, back to Escape. <laughs> When Sir Martin of Matlock heard the news, he smiled. He hadn't expected things to work so well, so quickly. But also the suddenness of the event had taken him by surprise, and he had to find a way to warn the sheriff of Robin Hood's decision. Because every available man would be needed in the attempt to free Little John, Robin gave the spy a sword and arrows, and the men in Lincoln Green began the march through Sherwood to Nottingham. They stopped at the edge of the forest, and Robin called a council meeting. We'll wait until it gets dark. Oh, but every hour, Robin, every minute we wait, little John has less of a chance. Chance? What chance do you think we'd have if we attacked in daylight? That's it, Will. Yeah. That's why we've got to wait. Well, I say curse the daylight and curse the sacrifice. While we're talking, little John may be dying. There's oh, no I other choice, Nick. Darkness is only about two hours away. With it, we'll have an element of surprise. Without that, we're finished. And so is little John. Oh, no. Can I say something, Robin? What? Oh, Martin. Martin Greenleaf, of course. Wouldn't I be the least likely to be recognized among you? I mean, supposing I went to the prison alone, say as a pasty maker, selling my wares to the guards. You've got a lot of courage, Martin, but... Uh, but what? You know... You know, it may be the thing. Oh, Robin, I... If you were to make yourself known to the guards, they might not suspect. When they're relieved of duty and replaced by others for the night, that might be our chance. While they're changing, if you could give us the signal to attack. Three blasts on my horn. Yes, three. Oh, right. If you are suspected, though, you know what it will mean. I'll take that chance. You took one with me, didn't you, Robin? All right, Martin. Do we all agree on it? Uh, yeah. All agree. You better leave your sword and bow with us. We'll have them for you ready when the time comes. And good luck, Martin. <laughs> you naughty, naughty man. You're going to pay for all these years, you know. I've waited a long time for this. Perhaps you thought I'd forgotten your treatment of me. The last time I was forced to go with you into the forest. Uh, <laughs> Tight, you are. Silence. Uh, you pay. 
<laughs> You're going to pay. Slowly. Slowly. Having to listen to you is payment enough, you nasty little maggot. Silence! You wait. You won't be <laughs> laughing long. First, there's a little matter of your master, Robin Hood. I've got a surprise for him. Don't you worry. <laughs> Couldn't be better. We won't have to bring him out of hiding. He'll come to us. I know if you try to do something heroic. Then I was right. Oh, yes. You were right. Well, come. When they do, we'll be ready. Three hundred men, you ugly pig. Waiting for them now, inside the gates of the town. What have you got to say about that? <coughs> My little John. <coughs> And at the edge of the forest, Robin and his men were also waiting. Each man silent with his own thoughts, and then the sun was gone from the sky. Robin stood a little apart, sharpening the blade of his dagger. Hey, Robin, yes? Oh, Friar Tuck. Now, Robin, I've been thinking. Yes? There was something little John spoke to me about before he left us. Well, what was it? This Martin Greenleaf. No? Oh? Well, go on. Well, now John didn't seem to know why, but he said he didn't like the man, didn't trust him. Now, that's strange for little John. Yeah. Now, at first I wondered about it. Then I forgot, and now I'm beginning to wonder again. Now, Martin's willingness... To do what he's done. You know, it is possible that he is one of the sheriffs. No, and... no, I, I can't believe that. No. Uh -huh. You've always been a good man, Robin. That's one of the reasons I joined you. I don't say I blame you if you thought his story was true. But at the same time, if it wasn't. If he was lying. Uh -huh. Then little John's capture is on my head. Yes. Why would he be so anxious to risk his life? He doesn't know, little John. Why should he care that much? Ah. I should have spoken of this before. Yeah, and before I might not have listened, which is even more foolishness. Call the men together, Friar. We've got to decide about this. And they decided. There was no proof of Martin Greenleaf's wrongdoing, but the thought was planted and grew until the fears were shared by all of them. And then Robin made his plan. Meanwhile, at the sheriff's house, for there the lawmaker had gone to eat the evening meal, a servant entered, and close behind was Sir Martin of Matlock. Sir Martin, you've got word. <laughs> Better than that. I've got their plan of attack. You mean they're coming now? At nightfall. <laughs> better and better. We're ready. I never dreamed of such quick results. When the guards are changed in the prison court tonight, that's the signal for attack. Uh -huh. I'm to blow three times on my horn. Good. The archers will be posted on the prison walls. Yes, and pikesmen inside the gates. And once the outlaws are in... Those that haven't been killed by the arrows... The horsemen can finish. We've got him. We've got him. But that wasn't the first time the sheriff had said these very same words, only to see his triumph melt away through his fingers. A little while later, as the last gleam of sunset was turning from gold to rust and clouds were tinged with purple, a ragged and forlorn figure was seen mingling with the soldiers inside the prison gates. And slowly the beggar made his way closer and closer to the prison door. Then he was inside and sidling up to the guard who was watching the preparations in the court. Go on, go on, get out of here. I haven't got anything for you. Get out. Kind sir, all I ask is that you... Don't make a sound or I'll cut your head off and I mean it. Back, back. Get away from the door. All right, quickly. Take me to the dungeon where you're holding little John. And remember one sound and you're going to be a very dead man. Fire. 
Faster. Faster. Yes, yes. The key. Little John. Little John. That you, Robin? Yes. Man, this time I was certain I'd be dancing at the end of a rope. <laughs> Not yet, little man. Uh, Guard the key to the chains. Hurry. Yes, yes. Uh, We've got to get out before the prison gates are closed. There's yeah. only a minute. Uh, Pretty small uh, odds. We've got to run like hares. Oh, give me a second to exercise. Uh, oh, this is the dog who hit me while I was chained. Here, one second, Robin. Uh, no. Uh, tilt your head, yeah. Master Foul Fellow. He... Yeah. Uh, j- drop more. Uh, there. <laughs> now, Robin, I'm ready. Robin and Little John made their way back to the great prison door and outside into the court where the light of day was almost gone. Two soldiers were approaching the gate to close it. And in the center of the square stood Sir Martin of Matlock, bugle in his hand. A stride away, looking pleased, the Sheriff of Nottingham. Walk as quickly as you can and as close to the walls as possible. Come on. Oh, I give my lot for my sword, or even I stay. Oh, he shouldn't have come, Robin. When I say the word, run. Hey, look. I'm starting to change the guard at the gates. All I hope is when Martin Greenleaf gives the signal to blow the brains right out of his head. Uh, now, run! A prisoner! We'll try for the other side of town, run across the lead, and then we'll... Little John, you're hurt. No. I'm all right. Hip breaking the shoulder. Where are the others? You'll see. And because of the confusion, Robin and Little John escaped from Nottingham. And as he'd planned, Robin led the way across the lee to a long hedgerow some 200 rods from the town walls. And there they stopped because behind the brush was Robin's entire force. And each man had an arrow ready in his bow. Uh, Give me a sword, one of you, and a bow. Here, little guy. I had not much hope of giving them to you, but I brought them along in prayerful faith. (laughs) (laughs) Fat old devil, thanks. (laughs) Quiet. Quiet now, men. They'll be coming out of the town in a moment. Be ready at the signal. And moments later, they saw the mounted soldiers ride out. And behind them had run the pikesmen and archers fanning out in a solid line. The lights of Nottingham were behind them. And where the men of the forest were hidden in darkness, such was not the case with the sheriff's men. The sound of hooves fell upon the stillness, and behind the hedgerow, every string full taut, every long bow bent. The slaughter was terrible. Almost every horseman had been unseated at the first volley, and the deadly cloud of arrows continued to fall steadily amongst the sheriff's army. And when finally in complete defeat, the archers and pikesmen were falling back, the men in green with drawn swords charged and completed the rout. It was Robin who came upon Sir Martin of Matlock. This Sir Martin is for your torture. This is for little John. And with a tremendous stroke, Robin cut him down. The battle lasted only a few moments longer, and then on a signal from Robin... The men of Sherwood melted back into the darkness in the forest, leaving the field strewn with the sheriff's dead and hurt soldiers. Little John's wounded shoulder was attended to by Friar Tuck, as were the wounds of the others. And then a great merrymaking began, which lasted far into the night. 
As for the sheriff of Nottingham, at the first sound of battle, he ran into his house, and locking the door behind him, stood quivering in fear until the news of defeat was brought to him. And then his great courage returned, and he swore a mighty oath that someday he'd go again into Sherwood, and by his own hand, bring Robert of Huntington to justice. <laughs> Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you Robert of Huntingdon, adapted by Anthony Ellis, starring William Conrad as Robin Hood. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Edgar Barrier, and Herb Ellis, with Jack Crucian, Vic Perrin, John Stevenson, Harry Bartell, and Peter Leeds. Editorial supervision is by John Meston, and the special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are standing at the entrance of a walled Arab town While behind you, coming slowly through the night Are the shuffling footsteps of a blind beggar Who will lead you into a harrowing world Of darkness and terror <laughs> If you don't know the difference between a hawk and a horse, that, as the pundits say, is a horse on you. And if you don't know the difference between CBS Radio's Bob Hawk and any ordinary quiz master, then you'd better take steps. Yes, take steps right to your radio Monday nights and enjoy the quips, the quiz, the merriment of the Bob Hawk Show on most of these same CBS radio stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, America now listens to 105 million radio sets and listens most to the CBS Radio Network.